Hello my friends and welcome to episode 5 of our Queen's Park series going pro on Football Manager 2020 of course. Since the last episode where we played Cove Rangers, hopefully you've not seen too many spoilers as my uh, view is once again not shown correctly. We've had a bit of a mixed bag now, if you didn't see that last episode, hopefully no spoilers for you, but go back and check it out. It was a cracking game against the best team in the league, Cooper, on poor form at the time. Since then, our form has been a bit of a mixed bag. Unfortunately, we started straight off with a 3-0 loss to Edinburgh City in Edinburgh. Jack Burrows, Blair Henderson and Scott Shepard scoring for them before we then lost 4-2 to Stenhouse Muir. I was a bit frustrated with this game because I felt this wasn't a 4-2 game. I felt we were very much in it at the time. Uh, Mark McGuigan with a brace um, and then Monroe with a penalty which had been obviously matched with a Ewan Smith penalty. Henby scored for his first time in a while. Then got sent down to 10 men and I went for it and Jordan Armstrong caught us on the counter unfortunately for us. Before we played uh, Brecon and this was kind of the sort of the wheels coming off as you see Matthew Henby starting to hit a bit of form. He scores a hat trick here at David Gal gets injured and that has been huge for us. He's out for another few weeks at present. Uh, Henry scoring a hat-trick in this game, which was absolutely great. Uh, before we played Edinburgh City, we won 2-0. Henry getting an injury himself in this game. Uh, Jack Perdue and Kenny Adamson on the score sheet. Kenny Adamson came in for this sort of period. And we played really well with Kenny Adamson before he got dropped again. Um, but unfortunately, Henry injured and Gal injured, which means that Sam Jamieson is the guy that covers for both of those positions. Um, which meant that you know, we had to bring guys up from the reserves or trust guys who, you know, I'd brought players in because I didn't trust them by looking at them. Um, so as you see, we've got Kudir Isaiah playing in this game up top. We drew one all with Anna, which was quite frustrating. I don't feel we're the worst team uh, from memory. No, was this the game that we started really well? I'm trying to remember back <laughs> between these games. Um, there was one of the games that was a clear draw, one of the games where we started really well and then Nick came on at the end. I think this was actually the one that was a clear draw draw. Um, Logan Martin got an equaliser for us, they'd scored early uh, through Daniel Scally and we just couldn't find a winner again. We then drew 0-0 against Sterling, which is a bit frustrating. I remember this game being quite a boring game and it was a cow and beef game. This is the one that was massive. Cammy Logan picked up an injury here. Jordan Alexander got sent off. Jordan Alexander sending off was a red card appeal that was successful. It was never a sending off and it completely changed the game. They scored early straight after we scored early. Uh, Logan Martin opened and scored for a match before Graham Taylor equalised quite quickly after. Glenn Doonan then scored to put us 2-1 up. And at that point we were dominant in this game. And then Jordan Alexander got sent off for a challenge that, as I said, the red card appeal was successful. We went defensive and they got a 90th minute equaliser. Very, very frustrating. Before we play Cove Rangers, now Cove have kicked on. They've found our form. And thankfully for us, Fraser Aird, who dominated this game, his contract's up in a couple of days. Um, you know, that might help us out. But right now, he was man of the match by far in this game. Regan Thompson picks up an ox. He does miss today's game, but we lost 3-0 there. Um, but it's the best performance that I've seen from any team this season against us and include the teams that are above us in the league now. I'm not saying that to blow Cove Rangers Trump, but I've been very complimentary of them in this series uh, in terms of their squad. But Fraser Aird absolutely dominated us. I tried, you know, a couple of different people on that left wing to try and, you know, stifle them, keep them back, try and, you know, use that free tackling. But if we go into the match, that's, I'm sure, it was something like two assists and a goal for him. Uh, match that, you know, player stats is what I'm looking for, player ratings. Uh, I'm wrong, it was just a goal and an assist player, you got the other assist, I apologise, but as you see, a 9.0 for Fraser Aird at uh, right back. We did have to make, you know, a lot of changes. Wasn't our full strength team, and you all see that there is a player who's came in on loan, um, but it's our final loan st uh, deal of that we can use, um, and it is Serge Attacke, another right winger, so it might confuse a bit of people, but he's an upgrade on what we've got, but it's the physicals that really attracted me to him, you know, he can get forward and even against Cove Rangers, there's a couple of times where we were pinned in and his pace just took us, you know, you watch Fraser Ayrton, who's not exactly a sluggish guy, struggling to keep up with him. Um, unfortunately, his finishing isn't very good, so he gets there and then couldn't finish his dinner, but, you know, it's a different kind of thing. Now, we did get him on less wages than Rangers wanted, but I promised him star player as a result of that. His contract's up at the end of the year with Rangers, so hopefully we can uh, bring him in next season. 
if we have a look at the tactics, and I'm thinking that maybe it's the tactics that aren't working that are causing us the problems. Defensively, you know, I'm using this as an end of season, uh, sort of January window of year, rather not end of season. Defensively, we've got issues. If we have a look, Steve Blatt is our best player. His form has hit, a, came off a cliff recently. But if we go to reports, he's a leading player for most Highland, Lowland League sides. And he's our best centre back. Ewan Smith is our next best. And he is a decent player for most League 2 sides, actually. So he's getting credit for being a League 2 defender now by my staff. Um, but, you know, this is an issue. We've obviously missed Henby. Galt is sort of out. Actually, he's probably fit to return to the bench now. Um, for Alisa. In fact, I might actually just throw him in the starting team and get that match fitness back up uh, for this game. But... I'm thinking of changing tactics in January and I mean that I have to spend some money to bring some players in because the free agents aren't, that we would need to bring in at the quality aren't already there. I do have a deal with a player, uh, Daryl McGett, plays for Durval in a league that's not even registered, played for Queen's Park in the past. He's a decent all-round centre-back, but he's also left-footed. Scouts rating him at four-star, which is operating at Ladbrokes League One level. So that would be a big, big upgrade for us. <coughs> in terms of the defence. I can't make that deal permanent just now, but I am going to be looking to do that when the January window opens. If it lets me, I'd quite like to bring him in for this season because, as you see, when we look at the league table, we're not in good shape now. We've fallen out of the playoffs. Cove Rangers are on the most unbelievable form if we have a look at the player detail. They're on the same points as us now. Remember when we played them last time, they were bottom of the league well behind us. Uh, but if we have a look at team detailed rather, and we have a look at form, they've lost one game in their last five. They are kicking on. Only Edinburgh City can match that level of form. Um, it's not ideal. We are down here in joint fifth. It's not great. And if we have a look at stages, and I think if you have a look, our home record is pretty decent. You know, third in the league for home, but we do have a game more played than a couple of other teams around us. Sort of away record, it's a problem, you know, we're down in the bottom half of the league for the away record. So I think a change of tactic might not be a bad idea. It does mean I'm spending some of that transfer budget. Um, we've got 95k of left. The problem is, is the wage budget. Do have a couple of players going out. Calvin McGorry is away to Queen of the South. We've got a couple of thousand for him. And Willie Muir waits at Mirren. Didn't really want him. He didn't really want to be here. But when I reduced his status, he was like, yeah, I'm happy to stay in the end. Mirren were interested. And I was like... Okay, I'll offer them out and see what they do. And then I ask for a bit more money and I sell on. So we've got some um, 3k and 1.5k roughly coming in here, plus sell ons for both of them. Um, and neither of them were going to get games. Both of them are contracted out at the end of the season. I think that was quite a smart deal for us. In all honesty, we can balance the wage budget out, of course, by you know releasing some players that would take off our transfer budget, of course. But it might not be the worst thing in the world to do that. You know, even. I was going to say sending Callum Wilson back, but he's not on any wages. We can't get any more loan players in, which is a problem, and Callum Wilson's been a bit of a waste in that regard. Um, you know, he's not even played a single. I think he's maybe played, what, one game? Five non-competitive games for us. It's been a bit of a waste of that loan slot, in all honesty. Uh, so, we definitely need centre-backs. Um, we've got, obviously, a right-winger coming in, who is an upgrade. Jack Purdue, I still want to get him on a new contract, but unfortunately, it's just developing far too fast. You know, he's currently operating at League One, currently playing close to his full poten current potential, apparently, but if Jack Purdue is not in form, we don't play well, and that is an issue. So that's, what, again, why I'm thinking to change the tactic, take a bit of pressure off of him. Uh, Cameo Logan's not been great, um, but he offers a bit more than Finlayson. It's kind of just one of those where I'm very, very confused. I might actually even bring Finlayson in in the defence, should that be an option in the future if his, you know, performances don't change. But again, I don't, excuse me, I don't think he's the best defensively. He's, what he's decent at is going forward and the physicals. Um, we do have the best physicals for defenders in the league uh, in terms of pace and stuff. So, you know, that kind of fits my tactics. Alec Garcia also developing fairly nicely, uh, as you can see there. But I might be trying to just, you know, get rid of some of the dead wood that, you know, but again, a lot of them aren't on big wages, so we're not going to free up a huge amount of wages to bring good players in. And that's the issue, and I don't believe 
we can go to finances and adjust the budget again. It's already full on wages and we're maxing that out with that last loan. So, you know, problems there. We're going to get into today's game though. It is against Dannon. It's taken us 10 minutes to sort of just go through what I'm kind of thinking. Midfield I'm fairly content with. We are getting some renewals. Henvey's been a bit of an issue. But again, I'm thinking I might just renew his contract to prevent the risk. Um, if we have a look at expires, as you can see, we've got... McCourt, Black, Gal, Farrell, Regan Thompson, Jack O'Sager eventually managed to get him happy again. And Lindurin all renewed for next season um, so far. And I think that's an important thing to do is make sure that we're renewing contracts of people who want to be here. And, you know, are at least in and around our first team at the minute. And that reduces the risk a little bit for next season. Stephen Black has fallen off a bit of a cliff, so we need to get him back developing properly. As you see, his progress bar is much more erratic than anyone else's. Um, it's up and down, up and down, so he is pretty much at his full peak. It's just whether we need to keep him there rather than letting him go there and regress. We're going to get into today's game, though. I haven't selected my team. As you see, there's some fitness issues on the bench, but that's going to be fixed by bringing uh, Josh Tennant on for Scott Gibson. As I'm playing a lot of the guys in reserves to try and get this match fitness up so that they're you know ready to come in in situations when we've got injuries. And I'm putting them in a lot of friendlies as well. You know, really trying to push this. But I think that's probably the best team that we can go with just now. We could maybe bring Kenny Adamson in for McCourt, but I feel like McCourt's a better option. Hopefully with Gal coming back in, McCourt kicks on a little bit. Uh, Henry obviously hopefully can find that form that he got just before he got injured. Uh, that would be quite handy for us. And obviously it's hacky. We didn't really get to... We've seen a bit of him against Cove Rangers, or at least I did but we've not seen a huge amount of them so far. Club's obviously in a good position, uh, but this is a team too. We've got Farrell and goal as normal, Logan, Black, Smith, McCourt as defence, Lindur and Block. I swapped uh, two players around because Regan Thompson's left footed and kept anyone to play on the left, so I thought I'd try it. Serge Attacky, Purdue, Gate, uh, Galt rather, and Henby up top. So it's about as full strength as we can be, uh, minus a few sort of match fitness issues, and a few players, uh, Attacky, Block, and Gal. And let's end this run of form. We're at home against Annan, who are, you know, a decent side. But hopefully we can nick some points here. We need a result. We need to build the confidence up again. Uh, we don't get a winter break at this level, so it's not like I can go and arrange some, you know, little friendlies to start building up the fitness. As Cammy Logan plays it forward for Jack Purdue. Oh, he's just ran straight into someone there. Stephen Black launches clear and David Gout just not got the legs to pick that up unfortunately, he's not the quickest. Clear away, Tommy Block loses out, Ewan Smith picks up though to Jack McCourt. Launch forward. I'm literally on shorter passing by the way guys. Play at the back, shorter passing and we see these launches so often with maximum reality on the tactics. I'm a bit confused as to what causes that but Serge Attacky gets his first goal. Henry with the cross. And Asaki charging in. And I'm curious to see if we see his pace here because it's, I mean, he's got a decent bit to run, but yeah. Just a little burst of acceleration. Tapping at the back post for Serge Asaki. His first goal for Queen's Park. And that puts us up to second in the league. It's very, very tight. Wasn't expecting to see moves us up to second. Of course, other results will still be draws right now. It's pretty much scheduled to change. Be very surprised if we jumped all the way up to second with a win. Got a free kick here. It looks like it's going to be Lynn Duran to take it. It usually is. Does Edinburgh City take the lead? Decent save from Mason. Actually, a very, very good free kick from Lynn Duran. Edinburgh City, of course, top of the league just now. Gal with the corner. Whips in. Always a near post one from that side. Purdue. Cross fails, back to Galt. Cross fails again. Purdue should react to that quite quickly. He's quite quick off the mark. Jack Purdue. Cammy Logan launches it in for Matthew Henvey. He's got a bit of work to do from this angle. Um, that wasn't quite you know, what I was looking for. Rush. Kind of want this highlight to end now that they've got the ball. Uh, FM's wishes is... Well, uh, my wishes of FM's command, apparently, there. Um, but, yeah, you can see the issues that we've got with the team. Um really is Henry on the ball does it elect to go back while well, you've got the counter on there that's interesting considering how direct we are at other times 
I really don't understand what's going on in regards to the tactical understanding. Block just launches it away. Again, we've got match familiarity on this tactic. I will clarify that. Uh, Farrell saves that. I'm not quite sure where that was going. In all honesty, that was quite a powerful strike from the striker there at Wilkie. It launches in. Oh, it's bounced about. And I was going to say that's going to go in. It's Edinburgh City beating Cove Rangers 2-0. You know, knocking Cove Rangers down uh, morale-wise maybe wouldn't be a bad thing for us. Uh, in all honesty, block. Struggling with fitness. is obviously he wasn't fully fit and not match fit either. So we're going to bring on Mitchell Duffy at half-time. Uh, I'm going to go you're capable of better, but again, we're not playing how this tactic is supposed to be. Um, mm, I am thinking Mitchell Duffy. Kyle Pryor's knackered, but he's more attacking. Mitchell Duffy can definitely do the defensive role. He's not bad at his passing either, so we'll bring him on. And hopefully kick on. I say that, they score straight after half time. Not good. Not good at all. It's just a free header at the back post. It's so simple. So simple. Again, told to play out to centre backs or full backs. Now, granted, he fought, found goal at that time, but a lot of the time he doesn't when he does that. Good ball from Purdue into Henvey. Good save, Mason. Good goalkeeping from both sides so far. There's Gal with another corner. Launches in. Doesn't find anyone. Purdue. Got to keep it alive. Find a pass. And again, Ewan Smith. Oh, just find a simple one. Very frustrated with how they do with this tactic at times. Just this launching forward. I might try a few other things to see if that changes that. Uh, we will bring on Logan Martin. In fact, no, Sam Jamieson for Gal. He's trying to find that fitness himself. Of course, this is his first game back. When doing with this free kick, can he find someone? Decent ball. It's for Stephen Black. Seven for the season. Concern his form has been absolutely awful recently. It's good to see him back on the score sheet. I mean, on a plate for him, he gets the free. So he gets to himself, free strike, six yards out. You expect him to bury it. Great ball from Linduran. That's us back up to second again. As, you know, things stand. Black heads away. Mitchell Duffy picks up. Linduran. Another simple pass to Mitchell Duffy. And then the long ball. Henvey might get a bit of luck here. Doesn't quite, he was just too slow off the mark. And then they're over the top. Kerr. Ewan Smith does get back in time. Well done. Cleared away. Stephen Black's knackered. And <laughs> I don't want to bring him off. Um, I think we will go with Logan Martin for Serge Attacky again. He's not to find that match fitness. He's not there yet. Just a simple quick swap. They're going a bit more route one. Logan launches this one in, cleared away. He should be the first to it though. And again, just that is one of the ones that really starts to frustrate me in this uh, tactic is the amount of times that you see them just launching it against. Oh my days. They just launch it against the first man. And then the clearance off your own man to set the guy through is really quite helpful as well, of course. I'm gonna go with a bit more time wasting here. Um, stop working the ball into the box be more disciplined and hold shape rather than the counter in the transition see if that changes much for us Douglas you and Smith do just I would have left that oh my day Duffy turns his back they all just turn on their back on it oh my you actually serious
That is absolute shocking from start to finish. We've just, literally just gifted them a goal. Heads it away. We win it. Here, have the ball back, mate. I'm just going to turn my back on it. I'm not even going to go to it. Have a free shot. Three individual errors in the space of about five seconds for them to score there. Absolutely shocking. Linduran whips it in. Stephen Black. Makes up for it. Very defensive. Bring you back. In fact, I'm actually going to do this with everyone. Winger on support, please. You can be a uh, inverted winger on support. Uh, you be a deep line playmaker on defend. 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 Time wasting. Yeah, I'm happy to keep that. Higher tempo, stop working and stop playing out of defense. Whole shape, regroup, slow pace down. Um, yep, happy with that. Confirm, go. Stephen Black Brace could <laughs> win us this game. Just as I was criticising him for dropping off. He's our second top goal scorer this season, so it's very difficult for me to be critical of him. But his performance of late have not been good enough. Um, obviously today he has answered those critics with two headers to get us three points. And that is huge. Well done, lads. You know, I need to build up their confidence there. <sighs> Not the most convincing win in the world, but it's a win. And Stenhouse Muir's form comes off. Cove Rangers take a defeat. We're still 10 points behind Edinburgh City, of course. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to catch that up. They're not dropping a whole lot of points. That was a big, big result for us. And I genuinely think if we can change tactics and get it right, we can push on. Um, if you remember, it tends to be that I will take a season to build and then go from there. You know, my second season always tends to be stronger than my first. Hopefully, we've got this right. We've got no loan spots left domestically, um, as I said, which is a bit of an issue. Um, so it's going to have to be transfers in. And we've got no wage budget. But we're going to get into the January transfer window. We'll be back just after that. Uh, where we'll play Albion Rovers at home. We've got some big games between here and there. El uh, Edinburgh, Stenhouse, Muir. Strand Rod in the cup. We've exceeded all expectations in the cup, so that's good. I know I just ended this episode, but I went to the board and I went, can I have a more transfer budget? They went, no. Can I have more wage budget? They went, no. And I went, can we go pro? And I went, yeah, no worries. So I know I just ended this episode. I'm going to try and edit that little bit out. I'm not the best at editing that kind of stuff, but you know. We're going pro at the end of this season. That is going to be huge for us next season and will really benefit the club going forward in terms of the level of players that we can attract and whatnot. Um, so, we're going pro next season, officially professional. That is absolutely brilliant news. Um, completion will be at the end of this season. <laughs> I'm absolutely ecstatic, because that's going to give us a huge advantage in this league and the league above. Um, we'll be fitter, stronger, you know, more developed and whatnot. Um, it's a big, big step in the right direction. Uh, for the club and it means hopefully longer contracts as well which means I'll be able to give guys like Regan Thompson a bit more protection and keep them at the club for a number of years and really develop them into the players that they hopefully can become. Attempt number three of ending episode five. Now this is going to take a whole lot of editing but we've now got no, you know, no um, no transfer budget uh, thingy change, uh, wage budget change I've mentioned previously. We've gone pro or we're going pro at the end of the season and we're not leaving the European Union. I felt this was such a big thing that I had to put in the video. So, um, you know, not leaving Europe. Great for football manager uh, terms. 
So hit a thumbs up for that. Hit a thumbs up for One Pro. I'll hopefully catch you all next time for the <clears throat> game that I can't remember. I've mentioned it three times now. You know, um, it's not Elgin. It's Albion Rovers at the end of the January transfer window. I'll hopefully catch you all then, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode.